Hi guys, last time we implemented the REST API with Duino, connected it to the MongoDB instance and run it on Linux. Today I'm going to add the authentication method and to check the access rules and to generate tokens. This allows us to prevent any anonymous access to the API and to get information about the user that sends the HTTP request. However, the source code, reference links and time codes are already below at the description to this video and your comments and feedback are always welcomed. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to use GVT today or JSON Web Tokens. This is a data format that is used to securely exchange information between client and server. And the main idea of it is using tokens. So basically token consists of three parts. The header, it contains the algorithm and the token type. The second one is payload. It is an object that has information that we'd like to pass. For example, it could be the name or expiration date or some access rules or some roles. And the last part is signature. It is used to verify that the token is eligible at the API site or somewhere in your systems. We are going to create this token and return it to user in a separate endpoint. Let's call it auth. So I think it's time to create a separate handler for it. Like this. Let's create a separate file for it, like auth.ts and define the function. And import it at the mod.ts file. Instead of using a direct URL, I would replace it with depth.ts file, since we already have these dependencies here. And let's talk a little bit about the API contract. As a part of this endpoint, I'm going to accept a username and a password. And if they are valid, for example, if you've checked it in your database, then you just create a token and respond it to a user. First of all, we need to validate the input and response with the bad request status code if it is wrong. So in this case, if the body is missing, we'll respond with the bad request status code. Now we need to make sure that we can get the values from the body. So at this time, we already know that we have username and password. So here we could just check it in the database, like if they are valid, then that's okay. Otherwise we return some error. Let's skip this step and just define the response body. As you can see, we have an object here and the property called access token, where the actual token will be. And then we just return it as a part of the body with the status code. In order to generate the token, we need two things. First is a secret key, which is used for a signature and to verify that the token is valid. Since we will need it in a multiple places, let's put it in a separate file like .env. I would define a variable like API secret and add some key. Okay, this should be fine. To load this end file as a part of our Dino API environment variables, we will need to use the .env package. So we can open third-party modules, search for .env, and copy this line into our depths.ts file. Okay. Next is we need a separate package to create and verify tokens, and it is called djvt. So once again, we open Dino, search for djvt, this one. It has a number of functions and we'll actually need all of them. So let's add it to our depths.ts file, copy this line. Instead of import, let's use it as an export and define all of the functions that we will need. So this is create, verify, decode, and uh, get numeric date. And instead of version, let's replace it with um, 
v2.1. That's all we need. Now let's get back to our handler and implement this function. So as a part of this function, we'd like to get the payload, which will encode into our token. And the type of token is string, so we just return it. Now let's obtain the secret from our end file. So now we need to use the function called create. Let's import it from the depths.ts. Here you can see that first of all, this is a header part. Here is the algorithm, like hs this one. The type is uh, gvt. Next, we need to pass the payload, which we'll get from the parameters. And the last one is secret. And this is it. Now let's implement the get payload function. I think it makes sense to add the username as a part of the object that will be available in the token. Beside that, I will also add the role and expiration time. The main idea of this payload is that you can place here whatever you want, which you don't want to get from the database or from any other places. Now let's see how it works. So we type dinner run slash a mod ts. This is fine. Let's open Postman. So we have the gist API auth method. We can send it. Here is the body. So I can send the username and the password. This token is what we get from our API. So let's see what does it look like in our GVT EO. And here you can see the header information that we used for creating this token and the payload that we've just encoded. I'd like to pay your attention is that this information is not securely encoded. In other words, it is not recommended to place any sensitive data here, like passwords, connection strings, or any other values that can compromise your systems. Okay, so now our API can issue the tokens, and I think that's the best time to start checking that they are valid. Otherwise, we should prevent access to the API and return some unauthorized status code like 401. And to make this happen, I'm going to create a middleware. Let's add the folder, like middlewares, and call it authorized. Let's define it. Basically, middleware is just another place where I can add some logic to process the HTTP request. So here we will have two arguments. The first one is context. And as we did it before, it just has some information about the HTTP request. The second argument named next, and this is just a function that we need to call if we'd like to continue processing our HTTP request. So we need to import the context from our depths.ts file, like we did with the router context. So I think we should probably just add it here, like this. First of all, we need to get the token from the headers, and usually it is a part of the default header called authorization. So let's get it. Let's add a separate file to implement this function. I would call it gvt.ts and define the function. First of all, let's get this header. And return null if it is empty. Next is we, we need to get our method and token from this header. If the method is not beer, then just return null. So if there is no token, then again return null. And eventually just return the token. And we need to remove this line. Okay. So basically the authorization header contains information about authentication type and the value. Since we are going to use tokens like this, 
we need to add beer at start. In future, if you'd like to implement the other authentication type, you can just add some logic here. Let's get back to our middleware and import this get token. So since we're going to use headers, we can just get it like context request headers. Okay, and now it's time to verify that the token is valid. So we can do this by using the verify function. Let's import the verify from our devs.js. And as I said before, we need to use these secret values. So I will take it from the code that we've just written. Let's add it here. Okay. So by using this verify function, we will check three things. First of all, is that the string that we get from headers is not just a random string. This is a valid token. Second is that the token expiration time is not expired, so the token is still valid. And the third is that token has some information that we've encoded here. And if it's wrong, that we will just throw the error. And as I know, the function under the hood will also throw the error. So we need to wrap this with a tray catch statement. like this. Talking about this catch block, usually it is not recommended to provide additional details what was wrong. So all you need to do is just to say that the access is not granted. And now when we've checked all of the necessary steps, all we need to do is just to call the next function and to continue to process the HTTP request. And this is the complete implementation of our middleware. Now we need to edit to the endpoint that we'd like to protect. So this will be for create, list, get, remove, and update. And this method will be available for everyone. Now let's see how it will work. First of all, we need to restart our application. Okay. And um, let's call our gist. So I need like to remove this token from here. Click send. And you see that we get the response like unauthorized. Now let's get some token. Okay, we copy it. And paste to the token input. And now it is also unauthorized. So that's a good question, why? Okay, now I think that the problem is that the connection is refused and um, there is a chance that our MongoDB instance hasn't started. So let's try to start it. Okay, and send it once again. Okay, now we can see that actually it works. Let's once again to remove it, click send, and this is unauthorized. Okay, so now our API can issue the tokens and verify that they are eligible. All we have to do is just to get the information from these tokens uh, within our handlers. As an example, let's add this feature to our list method. So let's say that we'd like to get the payload from the token. I would have the function called get payload from token. and just print it to the console log. So let's add this function to our gvtts file. So first of all, we need to get the token. If it is missing, then we'll return null. Next, we need to decode it. And again, if the payload is missing, then we will return null. We need to make sure that this function is correct. And if it's fine, then just return the payload. Otherwise, return null. 
and that's it. So let's see at our list method. Import it. Okay. And I think we can start and see how it will work. Let's get a new token. This one. And use it as a part of this method. So we got the object. And you can see that actually the payload has been printed to the console. And this information is now available in your handlers, so you can check the username, the role if you want, or maybe some expiration date. So whatever makes sense for you, you can place in this object and then to get right from the token. And this is it, the source code and the reference links are available at the description to this video. Your ideas and comments are always welcome. Hopefully you've enjoyed guys, I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.